and welcome back to Embodied Engagement. I'm Kate Crouch here at the Missoula Art Museum. And today we are looking at a group of artworks called The Space of Hope. And these different artworks were created by 13 different voices in reaction to global climate change, in reaction to COVID-19, as well as colonization, industrialization and extractions of our global world, of our world. We would like to acknowledge that MAM sits on the ancestral territories of the Salish and Pandare peoples, and we respect the indigenous stewards of this land. MAM acknowledges their rich cultures as a fundamental to artistic life in Montana and to the work of Missoula Art Museum. As well, we acknowledge that this presentation is being recorded by MCAT as part of a media assistance grant donated to Missoula Art Museum by MCAT. Thank you very much. So these 13 voices are representing news aspects of healing and repara reparations, nurturing, cooperation, unity, problem solving as a global society. The name of this collection is taken from the author, Rebecca Solvenek. We don't know what is going to happen or how or when, and that very uncertainty is the space of hope. So today we'll be highlighting five different artworks, and these five different artworks are going to be paired with meditations on the senses. So we'll investigate our own sensation of sight, smell, touch, hearing, and taste. So I'll invite you to either have a seat or if you enjoy standing and moving, then feel free to create a space for yourself and we'll get started. Our first sense is going to be sight and we are looking at the artwork Turning World by Christina Marin who is from Bozeman, Montana. We always love highlighting our Montana artists. And for site today, we're going to do a little bit of a challenge. Rather than just looking at the artwork, I'm gonna invite you to use your own internal vision. So for a moment, we'll have a, a look at what Marin has created here what she is highlighting are, is liminal space. So I had to Google what liminal space was the first time I looked at it. And liminal space, I found this to be so fascinating, is the space in between. So like a doorway, something that you're moving into. So there's a before and an after, and the liminal is right that space in between. So I'll invite you to go ahead and close your eyes or maybe take a couple of heavy blinks so that you can get the sensation of closing your eyes. Of course, if closing your eyes does not feel safe or comfortable, then keep your eyes open, that's fine. I'll have that feeling of the eyes closed or at least gazing softly and maybe even starting to allow your awareness to come to the light filtering behind the eyelids. And take a couple of nice deep breaths, allowing yourself to start to drift into that liminal space, an in-between space, allowing whatever was going on before, pause, allowing your mind to drift, and allowing whatever was going to happen in the future to just be pushed off to a side, like you're moving clouds. And take a moment to think about something maybe you're stepping towards or into. And notice how it feels in your body to have almost that sense of lightness. Allowing your internal vision and creativity to just drift like a dream. Start to feel that sensation of dreamlike state. You're just allowing the mind to softly wander. 
from forward to back. And when you feel ready, maybe blink the eyes back open and start to allow the gaze to wander across these large panels. Maybe noticing small details. Allow your mind to wander into this liminal space, the space in between, where there's nothing solid, just like a dream. And then maybe close the eyes back again. And whatever pictures from the artwork start to pop into, into your mind, let them be there. And just enjoy those different visions coming into the screen of the mind. And we'll take three breaths. Feeling your own sense of sight. You can blink the eyes back open. And we'll move on to our next sense. So here we are looking at William Carlson's coal artwork. And William Carlson is from Santa Fe. And he has a background not only in harvesting coal, but also creating it in different ways, using coal in ways that are a bit unusual. And today we're going to use coal as our inspiration for sound, for our sound meditation. So what you are going to hear is Carson pouring water over the coal and the reaction of the coal in the water, as well as the salt that's at the bottom of this art installation and this sculpture. Again, feel free to close your eyes or just let your attention and your eyes wander over the sculpture. So you start to become aware of sound. And for our sound meditation, just allow yourself to listen to the furthest sound that you can hear. So if you have any earbuds, that's just fine. Let's see if you can allow your awareness of sound to be as far away as possible. And sometimes this is just imagining what sounds are in your soundscape. And then slowly begin to draw your attention closer and closer. to the sounds in the room, to the sound of this sculpture having water dripped on it. And then see if you can allow your awareness of sound to get even closer, really narrowing in. And we'll spend a moment just listening for the sound of your own breath. Maybe you wanna take five deep breaths to anchor your body. Feel free to inhale and exhale through the mouth. Letting that natural cadence of breath arise. And once you have your awareness of your own breath sound, then layer in the sound of the sculpture, of the water being poured over the sculpture. And allow it to have whatever sensations on the body arise. Maybe you're feeling that dichotomy between heavy and light. So you notice the heaviness of the coal and the lightness of water, the lightness of the breath. The lightness may be in the body. And allow your awareness and sensation of what water means to you. Maybe it feels clarifying or grounding, relaxing. And take a moment to feel those sensations arise. 
perhaps even noticing in the sculpture, if you blink the eyes open, the balance that's happening. In those two dichotomies, heavy and light, balance, maybe feeling wobbly and unsure. Start to notice both the darkness and the light physically in the sculpture where you can see both the coal, the smooth, the rough. Where the pieces have collapsed. The darkness in the salt. And then allow yourself to just enjoy the sensations arising in the body and allow yourself to enjoy the sound of the water dripping on the coal. And then bring your focus back to your breath and start to allow those layers in the soundscape to pop back in listening for sounds that are further away and closer until you're ready to move on to our next sense, touch. So here we are at Casey Shackner's artwork called Almost, and it is a marble sculpture that has an invitation to touch it. And if you're able to come down to the art museum and investigate this for yourself, I highly recommend it. This is constructed in reaction to the separation that we have all had to go through in the global separation between ourselves and others. And so there's these hand marks where two people at the same time could hold on without touching but still feel the indentation. And it goes from rough to smooth and it's almost fluid on either side like you could reach up and hold, like you're holding hands. And so for touch today, just take a moment to just let your hands come together. You can feel your own touch. So we've all had to do some self-soothing and maybe even learn something about self-soothing so what I'll invite you to do for this meditation is just to allow yourself to squeeze your hands together. Maybe even start to work up your arm. Give yourself a little hug. Maybe close the eyes or just allow your mind to wander to time when you felt held. Maybe you would enjoy brushing the skin. So you could go ahead and brush or tap. We'll allow your awareness and attention of touch to come to the surface. Maybe remembering an iconic hug in your life. Letting your mind and awareness drift back and forth to the sensations on your body right now, to the warmth and coolness that you can feel. Maybe you just want to hold your hands together or stay in that warm embrace. Taking a moment to notice warmth and coolness on the skin. And then just take a moment to see if you can peel back the layer a little bit more deeply. Notice any constriction in the muscles and try and soften. Notice any tightness in the ligaments or maybe you're feeling like you need to roll through the neck or move or shake. So feeling that sensation of touch coming to the surface. Let's take a moment to investigate whether it's looking or feeling and noticing maybe the wrinkles on your skin. Maybe starting to open the eyes and look back at the sculpture and noticing places of smooth 
even where they're sparkling. And take another moment, as long as you would like, until you're ready to let the hands come back down. And take another breath. And we'll move on to our next sense, which will be smell. So here we are at smell, and this is probably going to be our most abstract out of the senses for today. Um, this is Eliza Evans' piece, All the Way to Hell, and it was, this is a core sample from a piece of land that she's purchased in reaction to fracking. Um, and so apparently, and I didn't know this, this is so cool, is that when you buy a mineral deed, you buy what's called all the way to hell and all the way to heaven. So your land right goes <laughs> all the way into the center of the earth and then all the way up into the sky. And so we're going to use smell here is our way of kind of connecting to an, our own place that feels very important to us. So just take a moment to smell things in your own area right now. Maybe you've got um, something that you've just cooked or something that's um, a smell that's in your home that you really enjoy. And you can keep your eyes open for this, that's just fine. But we'll take a couple of deep breaths, just smelling. And maybe thinking about a place that's important to you, whether it's where you are right now or maybe in the past. And just enjoying that sense of smell. And we'll have a reaction to what it would be like to have a piece of that taken away. Like I said, this is a bit more abstract. But what would that loss of smell be like? What would that loss of the land be like for you? And just allow yourself to drift in and out of the smells that are both around you and your memory of smell. So smell is one of the key components of our memory. So we can, if I say hot chocolate, you can almost smell the hot chocolate or cool day at the beach or hiking in the pines. So just feeling that drifting of both here and there and starting to generate how it feels and smells like to be in one of places that feels important to you. And just hang out there for another moment or so. And notice how your body feels when you remember that smell, whether it feels adventurous or it feels cozy and let those awarenesses come up. And take another moment, and when you're ready, we'll move on to our last sense, taste. And lastly for taste, we are looking at Margot Ged's work, Polygon and Parallelogram which are photographs of different granite rocks here in the Bitterroot. And Margot, I was very excited to see her work here. She's a Missoula artist. And for taste, we're going to dive a little bit more deeply into the artwork itself. So these are photographs after a fire that was, went through the Bitterroot. And you can see the fireweed starting to grow again. If you are in Western Montana right now, you can probably take a deep breath and taste 
the smoke that's in the air. And this is something that we all live with and are generally conflicted with because we all, most of us acknowledge that fire is a necessary part of our landscape for change and rebirth. However, it is something that affects us on a daily basis, how to navigate our lives through this taste that you have and whether it's at night or during the day and we construct our lives around it. So we're gonna just allow ourselves for a moment to taste that smoke. Maybe that's in the air with you right now or you can do a remembering of the taste. And instead of feeling the negative that's immediately gonna come up in reaction, it doesn't taste good, how are my lungs, all of that. It's gonna allow the understanding that this is rebirth and change and that it's necessary both for our own landscape and for our community and for the world we live in to continually change and to reconstruct itself. So we're tasting, smelling, feeling that smoke and allowing the for me, it feels like a compression that happens in the body before I can take a deeper breath. Um, you can even hear my voice is a little crackly from the smoke and we've been inside. Maybe close the eyes or just allow yourself to look at these really cool photographs, acknowledging and feeling the movement forward after a fire and what's happening is regeneration. This is where we find our morels in the spring. It's where we see that sweet green fireweed growth. In this work, these granite rocks had been completely obstructed by the timber around it and now they're exposed. Maybe think for a moment about ways where we move through a hard time. Maybe something comes up immediately when I say going through a tough time or acknowledging a challenge. You can let that taste of smoke come into the mouth and the body. Maybe how that regeneration, rebirth are going to move you towards something different and new. As we acknowledge the difficulty and start to reimagine what the next step would be. And tasting the smoke, or remembering the taste. And then we'll just end by bringing the hands together and we'll rub the hands together vigorously so that you're creating heat and reconnecting with the touch. And then go ahead and take the palms if it feels okay and you're gonna press them over the eyes so reconnecting with sight. Again, connecting with the soundscape, listening. A deep breath in through the nose. And then as you exhale, slide the hands down the face and just take the hands over the heart for a moment. And take a moment to thank yourself for taking time to explore these different artworks in a different way. And I thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you.